welcome everyone for coming and uh, you know filling this room to the gills, and for all the people that uh, you know weren't able to make their way into this room. Uh, it will be recorded for their viewing pleasure later. Um, but uh, really, uh, thank you for coming um, and showing an interest in uh, Key Lime. Uh, just a quick show of hands: How many of you have heard of Key Lime before? Perfect, half of you. That's a that's a good number. <laughs> Um, and for the other half, I hope this is a, a good introduction into the community and uh, what KeyLime is offering. Um, so you may be asking yourself, what is KeyLime? Well, in short, KeyLime is a technology to centralize the remote attestation of distributed systems. Uh, to give an example of what that means, uh, we can look at the initial reason that uh, KeyLime was created. So back in 2013, uh, members of MIT Lincoln Laboratory were enlisted to help protect the nodes of the Mass Open Cloud project. Um, so you know, they were able to build this initial system uh, to do that. The solution needed to solve the problems of root of trust and remote attestation of the remote node provisioning and remote node provisioning, uh, key concepts there. And they also needed to use the avail available industry standard mechanisms to secure COT servers uh, from hardware on up through the stack. Now, to enable these functions, they relied on the TPM chips available in most, uh, most common hardware today, uh, from laptops to servers to even IoT ARM devices. Uh, most of these are enabled either with chip on board or with headers that you can buy a, a chip on the secondary market and plug it in. Now, TPM chips have been used to secure a multitude of different use cases. Uh, and it, it <clears throat> excuse me. And one of its strengths is the ability uh, to be a hardware root of trust for systems. Um, and that's really where KeyLime is using it as the integrity management um, hardware root of trust. So the typical user's view of a system when they come into a cloud system or uh, an IaaS system is that, hey, you know what? I can trust the company that's providing me the, these systems. Uh, it's kind of a blind trust. You're relying on the, the provider to have done all the due diligence uh, to, to lock down the systems. But trust is from the bottom up, from the hardware all the way up through, through the top of the software stacks. And as we know, data centers are huge. So when some malware gets somewhere on your systems, sysadmins can't be checking all of the individual uh, stacks or, all the individual systems for, for uh, uh, malware, and when it gets down into the firmware, that's even harder to look for. Uh, so ripped from the headlines a couple of years ago, you know, these attacks are out and they are common. So how do you, how do you protect against it? Because now you don't have a security view for the entire system. You can't trust any piece of the system. So that's where KeyLine comes in. So a quick overview of the, of the uh, high-level architecture. So there is an agent, a KeyLine agent, that will live on each of the cloud nodes. And that agent then communicates to back-end tenant systems, tenant management systems, uh, to do the verification and uh, registration of each node in the overall cloud system. Uh, so those tenant systems can be in the cloud. It could be a dedicated cloud uh, resource, or it can be off-site in the actual tenant's home base, uh, and it will communicate over uh, secure, uh, uh, <coughs> secure communication lines to um, enable the entire security system. So it can secure anything from a single multi-user system all the way up through you know, a multi-tenant uh, distributed cloud system with multiple uh, DMs around the world. Uh, but it can also be run on bare metal as well as VMs. So a little bit of how uh, the, uh, the technology of KeyLime works. So KeyLime works on a hash system that is run by the TPM. The TPM has a root key within it 
that it will sign each hash of the boot process as it goes through. So each hash is extended by the next step in, in the stack. And only a valid TPM, uh, or you can, you can attest that that entire boot stack is valid by using the TPM's public key. The private key is all the way down on the TPM itself. It cannot be accessed by any uh, software. It, you, can't, you can't retrieve it. So it's a secure hardware-based private key. So here you see from the hardware uh, up, so the first step, it measures the firmware, hashes that, then passes that to the bootloader in the shim, measures that, extends that into uh, the TPM. The TPM has memory uh, locations called uh, uh, program control registers, PCRs, uh, where it stores these hashes. And we'll see some of those later on in the demonstration. Uh, but Really, all you need to know here is that as the boot process moves on, each step is hashed and it's extended and stored in the TPM securely, and it's uh, secured by the hash based on the secure key, the private key of the TPM. Uh, so that's, that's the boot process. So you can also secure your running system, too, by giving a uh, approved whitelist of processes for your system. And Keylime will go through and it will ask the TPM to you know, sign what's running on your system so that you can then compare the hashes of what's running on the system to the gold system hash that you created you know, with your offline air gap system as a gold, gold image. So pretty much the way this works is you have a cloud provider, you're the tenant. Say, hey, Mr. Cloud Provider, can I trust your infrastructure? And the cloud provider says, sure, but if, if you want to really trust me, here's the TPM signed log uh, showing that this system is what you expected it to be. And then if you do the comparisons and you say, yes, this is what I expect it to be, then you say, all right, cool, go start my workload. Otherwise, at that point, you can say, hey, this is crap. You know, I can't trust this. You know, we're out of this node. Go get me another one. Uh, so likewise, with the continuous file uh, attestation, the continuous runtime attestation, it's a constant ask. So you're, you're always asking, can I still trust you? Can I still trust you? Can I still trust you? Uh, and the TPM or the agent, which is communicating with the TPM, will keep reporting back, yes, here, yes, here, yes, here. But it's not really saying yes, it's just saying here. Here is my, here's my signed logs. You tell me if you can trust me and then do what you need to based on that, that decision. So that's kind of the high level overview. Um, now we'll go into some of the, the lower level uh, technology itself. Now, this is gonna have to go fast and I apologize, this is an hour long presentation condensed into a half an hour, uh, but I will be up at the Red Hat booth after this, so if anyone wants any more information on this uh, because it goes too fast, please come up and see me. Uh, so first, uh, we'll start off with your cloud node. So now on the cloud node, like I mentioned, you have this agent running. So this agent is a piece of the key line system. That's the only other piece of software you'll need to uh, enter into the key lime security. Uh, so, and you also have your cloud user as your tenant. Again, that tenant can be, that tenant system can be anywhere. So the other couple key lime components uh, that are needed uh, will be running in a tenant uh, facility somewhere is the Keylime verifier, which will be used to constantly uh, get those TPM uh, reports from the agent, and the Keylime registrar. The Keylime registrar is a centralized location where each agent will come up and report its TPM's uh, public keys. So it'll be a central repository to hold that information so that everyone in the system doesn't have to be pinging everybody else's uh, uh, node to, to ask for those. So it's a centralized location that everyone knows where to get that information from. So high level or mid-level view of, of the Keylime secret sauce here. So I uh, lost my keys. So that's supposed to show uh, a key being split into two, and I don't know why that has changed from five minutes ago. But, um, so we have a boot key. 
And that boot key is going to be cryptographically split into two pieces. Now, that is uh, to make sure that we can, number one, uh, delegate the security checking piece to the verifier. Um, but then we can also not have the verifier able to just start spinning up nodes. The other half of the key is held by the tenant and only passed to a node at time that it wants that node to actually come up in provision. Uh, so as I was mentioning, the first half of the key goes to the delegation check uh, of the verifier. And the second half is to demonstrate the intent that the tenant actually wants to bring up the node. So what will happen is that the verifier will check the integrity of the cloud node. And if it checks out, it will pass its half of the key down. Um, and it, will, it checks the validity of the, of the TPM's uh, key by asking the registrar if, hey, is this key valid? Registrar will report back, yeah, great. OK, he passes down his, his side of the key. And then the tenant, at whatever time the tenant wants to pull up the node, it sends the tenant half. At that point, the node will have both halves of the key. It can recombine it, and it can start its provisioning with it. So the two pieces that Keylime introduced, the two new concepts that Keylime introduces, is this concept of, uh, of uh, TPM key registration into a centralized location and the splitting of the keys to uh, ensure that provisioning only happens when the tenant wants it to happen in a secure manner. So now we get into the more, more low-level details, um, the key line key definitions. So we have a number of keys that are used within the system. Uh, the endorsement key is that hardware-based TPM key that is all the way down, burned in at the manufacturer site that can't be accessed by anyone. Um, and that is used in very, very uh, few functions of the Keylime system. We don't want to be leaking that key out uh, just in case there was some, some issue with the encryption hash that was used to generate the key. We don't want to be spreading that all over the place. So because of that, and because we also want the TPM to be signing all of this stuff, we need to create a secondary key, which is also TPM-based. So the TPM-based will, uh, the TPM will also create an attestation uh, key, an AIK, um, and that is used to actually sign all of the quotes that are being asked for. Uh, and then we have a challenge key uh, that is used in the handshaking for Keylime. We'll get into all of these in, in the walkthroughs. Uh, and the bootstrap key, that's the key that was shown being split into two pieces. And those pieces are U and V. Um, and then we have uh, an NK key, which is used to uh, protect those keys during the initial transmittal, because they're going over non-secure uh, communication channels at that point. So the first step in bringing up a Keylime node is to start the cloud node with the agent on it. The agent has the TPM enabled, and the TPM has an endorsement key. At that point, it needs to create its attestation key, um, and then it needs to communicate those keys to the registrar with its ID, its node ID. Now, that node ID can be anything. Um, generally, in a cloud system, it'll be your cloud node ID. So that all gets transmitted off to the registrar, stored away for the other parts of the system to, uh, to manage. So once it's communicated its keys and ID across, then the registrar will come down and it will give it a challenge to make sure that it knows the keys, um, that I am actually talking with the correct TPM. So it will use its public uh, encryption keys to uh, ball up the um, uh, the ephemeral challenge key. Uh, and then once it has that challenge key, it will then, uh, the, the cloud node will then use that key that it's now decrypted using its internal hardware keys. Um, so now it knows that yes, okay, it encrypts its ID and sends that back to the registrar using that challenge key. So it was only passed the public keys. So it encrypts it, sends it back. The registrar then decrypts it and says, yes, that's who I thought I was talking to. Great, valid. All right. So that was that part. So now it knows it can trust that 
uh, attestation key because again, that's not hardware hardware burned in, so that's just something that's generated. Um, so now it knows it can uh, tie that AIK to the EK. So the next step then uh, is to bootstrap. So at that point, we have the keys, which again disappeared on me. Um, so it splits off into you, and it sends you over to the cloud, cloud verifier. Um, again, ID, uh, uh, the half of the key and everything, and a whitelist telling it you know, what to, um, what, what's good in the system. So then the verifier will then go and check the, uh, the condition of the cloud node. It will verify that, yes, this is, again, the cloud node that we're thinking of, um, and it will actually ask for a TPM quote of the measurements. Um, it will also pass down announce uh, to make sure that it's a fresh quote, that something hasn't gotten in the way, and just passing back a quote that was good from weeks ago, you know, trying to man in the middle there. Um, and then the reply from the cloud node will be checked against the registrar's known good values for the AIK. Once it verifies that the AIK is good, uh, then it will pass the V half of the key down, encrypted uh, with the, um, with, with, with the, the NK, the key that's used just to uh, secure the, the key halves. So now that the verifier is good, it knows, it knows the node's good, it's running, it's doing everything it needs to, now the tenant can tell it to go run. So this is the demonstrate intent step. So now, like, you know, similarly to what the verifier did, now the tenant's gonna go and ask for a quote, verify the quote with the nouns, making sure it was fresh, uh, it's gonna check, make sure it was a valid AIK, everything comes back good, and it will pass its half down. So it will pass you down. Now, the cloud node has both halves, it can recombine them, and then it can decrypt uh, the encrypted uh, boot manifest, uh, provisioning manifest, and go on its way um, and uh, bring itself up. So now we've got a system that's running. We know that the initial state was trusted, uh, but we wanna make sure that we know that it can continue to be trusted. So the verifier is going to constantly be asking for uh, TPM measurements of the running system. Um, it's gonna, you know, same, same type of process of creating an ounce, making sure it's a, a good, fresh, fresh quote, uh, passing it back and, and checking that everything checks out checking the AIKs again, everything's good, okay, keep going. But now, some malware gets on the machine. Now, just the presence of a file on the machine is not going to trigger anything. It really doesn't matter if there's a file on the machine. But if it starts running, well then the verifier is gonna go down, it's gonna create its hashes of the running system, and it's gonna come back and it's gonna check to see if it matches with the gold whitelist images. It's gonna say, no, nope, something else is running. Throw a flag and do whatever uh, uh, functions are needed to cut that, cut that node off. And those are programmable uh, add-on hooks that you can create depending on what you want that system to do when it discovers uh, something out of the ordinary. So one of the things that uh, it can be used for is certificate revocation. So how, how would certificates work you know, within the system? Uh, so there'd be a certificate authority that will create the certs and pass those certs into the tenant. Now the tenant will use that boot key that it initially broke up uh, the, the public halves of and it will, encrypt it, with, it will encrypt the certs with the private half of that boot key and transmit that down to the node. The node now has the public boot key, so it can now decrypt it um, and, and go. So now that the certs are in there, uh, the cloud verifier can do its integrity measure measurements with it, uh, and then if something comes up that uh, something went wrong, it can then communicate, okay, uh, re revoke these certificates. Uh, so that's kind of how that works. 
Uh, so there's a, a number of different things that certificates can be used for um, and Keylime can enable. Uh, secure configure management, you know, you can do encrypted hard disks. And, uh, uh, you know, the one thing that we really are uh, looking at here, though, is uh, the IPsec encryption because that is what you can use to communicate securely between your nodes, um, and then you can, if something goes wrong, you can cut that off and fence off a node. So how, what would that look like? So first, you would come up, the, the nodes would come up, and they'd have the certs, and they'd make an IPsec connection between them. Uh, attestation loop goes on, all the quotes look good, okay, keep going. Uh, checks both systems constantly, Great. Okay, malware guns on. So, oh, we, we've got an evil imposter in there somewhere. Okay, we know something went wrong. Verifier comes, checks, catches it. All right, let's cut off the certs. It will communicate the revocation to the tenant and all of the other nodes in the system, and then the node can cut off its own, uh, can cut off its own IPsec tunnels. So that's kind of a, a lower level rushed through example of all of this. I can go into much more detail at the booth um, if, if you want. So what we really wanted to get to as well is a demonstration here. Um, and you can also run through these demonstrations yourselves. Uh, all of the information is on the Keylime sites uh, at the, the user's guide um, pages. So if I can quickly take this down. Mirror my screen to make things easier. Okay, so the setup we have here, uh, we have two nodes. These are both remote nodes. They're not running on my laptop. Uh, one is called Neptune. That will act as the node in the system, the cloud node uh, that's being monitored. And we have Saturn, which is the tenant node. Uh, so. I mentioned earlier about the, the TPM PCRs. Uh, so here on the uh, node, we'll, we'll check what those PCR values are. So those PCR values are post boot loaded into, into the, or during boot loaded into the PCRs. Um, we are interested in, right now, uh, PCR9. Now PCR9 is part of the shim phase of, of the boot load. Uh, so we're gonna manipulate that in this demo to show what happens on a um, non-secure boot, <laughs> uh, as it were. Um, so if we come over here, first thing we need to do is we need to start the Keylime verifier. Uh, that will generate any needed keys uh, used within the system. And we'll start up the registrar. Again, these are on tenant nodes on Saturn. Okay, those are both running. We need to run the agent on this node. So again, this is, this is the uh, cloud node that we're showing the TPEMP values for. So now we're running, everything's, everything's up, but we haven't given that secondary key to tell it to come up yet. So now we will go over back to Saturn. Uh, not that one. So if we recall back at the PCR9 value here, B6D59, I've actually changed it to BD, B6D58. So this is, the PCR value that we're telling uh, the verifier that we expect. So we're passing this in. Come over to the verifier. Make sure things actually came up. There we go. So the verifier caught it. PCR value nine does not match. So it says, okay, well, pff, doesn't match. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell it and cut it off. So, you know, it's very, very easy demo on, on that side. But now we want to actually bring that node up. If I can get back to the thing. So we can go back and we can 
delete the node out of the system. And then we can add it back in with the correct value. Okay. And over on the agent, now you can see that it's constantly being asked for integrity checks for those TPM quotes. So it's going, this is a normal, normal boot, everything checked out during the boot phase. So now uh, we wanna show that when something is introduced that we don't like, uh, what happens? So we actually want to delete the node back out. For this check, so all of these all of these parameters that are being passed on the uh, on the command line. Um, are also resident in a config file. So you can make all these settings in the config file and just let it go. Uh, we're playing around with the values, so we're doing adding the different parameters on the command line. Uh, so now we want to just say, okay, uh, we want to pass in a list of known good uh, programs that are running uh, and things that we know are in there that we don't care about. So the known good is the whitelist, and the ones we don't care about is the excludes.txt. So we're gonna add that, add the node back in. And here you can see, again, the post of V key, so that's half of the key that was just passed in by, uh, by the tenant. So now we're back into that integrity loop. And now I've got this evil script um, that I'm going to copy across onto a new file. And it's very simple. It doesn't really do anything, but it's not on the whitelist. Uh, so we're gonna change that to be executable. Okay. It's on the system. It's not running. System doesn't care. Everything's still good. Now, if we actually run that, when we go over to the verifier, we can see that it caught. File not found in the whitelist. And we go back over to the agent. The agent's not being queried anymore. The agent is cut off from the verifier system. Uh, so that's really you know, the simplicity of how it works uh, via the command line. Um, the good thing about this is that it's all REST APIs as well. So you can build your own management systems around this uh, to you know, do all of your provisioning and uh, error catching and dissemination, uh, but we will go back to the presentation. And we'll do a quick, quick wrap up. Um, well, that's not the way that should have worked. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. Try that again. Hmm. No, I'll just 
mirror it then. Make it easy on us. OK, so uh, to wrap up what's going on in the Keylam community. Uh, so we've got a couple uh, tasks that we're tackling right now. Uh, there is heavy development on our version 5 release, uh, major port from Python 2 to Python 3. Uh, and we're also porting the uh, cryptography uh, uh, libraries that are being used uh, to, Pi, uh, to Pi Crypto, Pi Cryptography. Uh, because the Pi Cryptography library is actually FIPS compliant, and we want the systems to be FIPS compliant. Uh, we're also working on Fedora packaging, and uh, we're documenting uh, everything that we're running through, building out the documentation, users' files, and everything. Um, and we're doing some virtual TPM development on, for the KVM hypervisor. Now again, because this is a shortened, uh, uh, Shortened presentation, we'll run through this very quickly. So initially, uh, there is a virtual TPM that was developed for the Zen hypervisor um, because it was the only one that was supporting TPM back in 2013. Uh, so that's why it was chosen. But to enable a virtualized TPM uh, that's actually tied to the hardware TPM, each VM that comes up will be assigned a uh, virtualized TPM VM. Uh, so you'll actually have a one-to-one -one correspondence there. Uh, it's a very small VM, uh, but it does grow the system. But the intricacies here are now that we have a dual TPM system. So we have the virtualized TPM, which is controlled by the tenant. Uh, but we also need to have the hardware TPM controlled by the provider. So we introduce a provider registrar into the system to uh, maintain the validity of the hardware TPMs in the system. And Keylime will, uh, or the Keylime agent will only worry about the virtual um, TPM. But to be able to really trust that the virtual TPM is, you know, its integrity state, because it's software, it can be hacked, or someone can you know, install its keys. We've come up, uh, it, their own keys into it. Uh, we've come up with this deep quote uh, system, where you ask for a deep quote, and that will not only get a quote from the virtual TPM, but the virtual TPM will then go all the way down to the hardware TPM to grab that full stack view. So this is, this is done always at boot time. So you want to make sure that you initially have that deep quote to verify the entire system. And then when the um, verifier runs in its continuous loop, it will do it on its first uh, check to make sure, again, that the entire, entire integrity stack is in intact. Um, but then it will do a lighter weight quote um, during most of its checks. But every once in a while, it will do that deep code again just to ensure that that full system integrity is maintained. Uh, so that's you know, a quick, quick overview of the virtual TPM. Again, we can go into more at the booth if you want. Um, what's, what's going on in the community going forward? Uh, we're looking at porting uh, the non-agent uh, components to Rust. Right now, the Rust agent, or sorry, the Keylime agent is uh, developed in Rust. Um, to ensure its security. Uh, Python isn't that secure, so uh, we wanted to make sure that the pieces running on the actual cloud nodes were secure. We're investigating what other pieces need to be more secure um, or performant, so uh, that's a current, current thing going on. Um, and so we're also looking at compatibility of different OSs. So initially, this was uh, developed on, on uh, Ubuntu and Zen Hypervisor, uh, because that's uh, what was around at the time supporting uh, TPMs. Uh, but now uh, we're, we're doing work packaging for Fedora. Um, we're looking to ensure that this runs on RHEL, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, ARM systems, um, you know, anything out there that, that the, the community wants uh, that the wider community wants to use Keylime for. Um, and we're doing system diversity testing to make sure that, hey, if it works on my machine, it also works on your machine. There are so many different variations, so many different you know, TPM chip manufacturers that we need to you know, do wider things. Um, problem is, 
we're only a team of six right now, uh, and there's a lot of work here that needs to be done. So, you know, we're really looking for people to come in and join the community um, and help out with this. One of the, the more fun things that, that's in the near future is us looking at the containers, um, containerizing key lime itself, but also integrity checking containers during runtime. So if that interests you, you know, um, help protect your slice and come join us and uh, join the community, uh, wide open community. That's your landing page, so have fun with it. And thank you for your time. Any questions? So uh, this does not have a direct relationship with eNarcs. Um, it is another uh, security product that uh, you know we're we're trying to foster at Red Hat, um, and it, it's this is more of an upper level. Uh, node security um, and not necessarily a, a lower level protecting the code runtime uh, security. So, anything else? Well, oh, we got another one. Good. So, in the uh, example you gave where you cut off one node, yep. see how that will work fine if you only cut off one node. But if 45% of your nodes are compromised roughly at the same time, then well, it. Well, so it, you're only worrying about protecting the good nodes. If the other nodes are compromised, then they can go keep communicating with themselves. Um, but the outlet path, the outlet pipe, it, is still going to be protected. So you're going to cut that outlet pipe off um, based on those certificates. So they can still be running whatever they're trying to do on the system and only able to communicate with themselves, with, with the compromised nodes. Uh, so that's how that would, that would look. Right, well, right, exactly. Well, those will all be protected by your, your TLS connections. Um, so as soon as those certs are revoked, you know, that, that'll cut off the, the connections. Anything else? All right, well, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have more questions, come find me.